Hello and welcome to episode 11 of Exploring Joomla 3.x. In uh, the last episode we were, uh, were continuing to work on our random quote module where we created uh, a database table um, using um, LibreOffice Calc as a spreadsheet to save a CSV file and um, use that to uh, in conjunction with PHP MyAdmin to uh, create a table and then populate that table and then finally use PHP uh, MyAdmin to export uh, the data as a SQL file and then uh, we used that SQL file um, uh, in our component to so that we can install the database but we had to make some minor changes uh, to the file itself and then of course we updated the XML file and installed it and then uh, um, we basically just went back into PHP uh, when we tested to see if uh, it did in fact create the database table and populate it and then uninstall when we uninstalled the uh, module we went to uh, PHP MyAdmin and then uh, verified that it did drop the table so in this episode we're going to continue with the um, random uh, quote module and uh, in this episode uh, I plan on talking a little bit about the MVC concept um, break the uh, module out into s some sort of pseudo uh, MVC um, uh, files and then um, then we're gonna write the code to actually get a quote from the database so we got a lot to cover this this is gonna take some time so you might want to pause and go get you a cold drink as you watch and work um, but let's get started so you know, on my desktop, I have a Joomla project folder where I, where we've been working, and I have the random quote um, folder. And in here, I have the zip file from uh, episode 10, the last one. So I'm just going to um, open this and extract this to this folder here. Okay, and I'm just going to get rid of this file for now. So here's where we uh, left off from the last episode. You know, we have the uh, the SQL files that we created, the install, uninstall, um, and updated. And if we can zip this up and install it, we would be exactly where we were a while ago. Uh, just as a side note, um, I did uninstall the module from my site, but uh, if you didn't, it, it won't matter. We can continue to work on through this. So first I want to talk a little bit about the um, MVC uh, concept that st MVC stands for model view controller it's a design pattern um, that uh, that uh, is used extensively uh, in Joomla components uh, and recall components are what fill the main area of the screen uh, but I think that uh, using the the concept of a model view controller uh, pretty much uh, you know a, sort of applies to a, a, a module too though sp they don't specifically use it but the, uh, the the concept or the idea um, kind of applies. So let's talk about uh, just what is it? What is a, a model view and a controller? Well, th let's start with the controller. The, the controller should receive a user's input, right? And it should process it in some way, and then after it's done processing, should act on it. Okay. So think of a, like a remote uh, for a DVD player. You know, when you press the play button <clears throat> on the remote, it sends a signal to the DVD player, right? And the model and we'll talk more about that to play the disk right so the controller for the comp uh, for a component in Joomla will examine a user's input and then call methods in the model to get what it needs okay so that brings up the model uh, the model's job is just to retrieve data and return it okay so uh, and using the example that we were talking about when we press play on the DVD remote which is the controller right the controller tells the DVD player to get the video contents from the disk uh, the DVD player, which is the model, will access the disk and then start sending the data to your television. And the television is what's known as the view. Okay, so a model for a Joomla component will typically access the database, uh, maybe access some parameters and stuff like that, and return data uh, to the controller uh, so that it can be used in the view. And then finally, we you know, we have the view. Now the view's job is just to display data, right? That was returned from the controller, and um, that's all it's, it's concerned with. It doesn't care where it came from, how it got it, or anything else. It just wants the data and it will present it um, um, to the users. So, like I said, Joomla components use the model view controller 
heavily and when we get into components we'll talk about that in those classes um, but modules you know on the other hand they, they don't they don't use models they use or controllers right in the classic sense right but the code can be broken down to sort of resemble them right and, and by doing that the end result is that the code's easier to read you know because you got it broken down in specific parts you know you got one part that uh, uh, is handling the uh, logic right the controller or the in our case which would be the the PHP file for the module itself right and then you have uh, the view and, and we kinda talked about that in the last uh, episode when we created this default view in this uh, file here and it, it's just concerned with um, displaying the data and then there's another file um, that we're going to use that will handle talking to the database okay so um, so the first thing I think we need to do uh, is um, is uh, we're going to add a, a, a helper class to the module okay and um, to do that we need to uh, we need to hold uh, uh, we need to create a file that will hold the helper class so we're going to do that. we're going to create an empty file here and we're going to call this helper dot php okay and this is not some random name this is uh if you go and look at uh, any of the uh, modules installed uh, with the core uh, joomla install you'll see that uh, the that's all they it's sort of a standard uh, the helper dot php so I, I like standards so we're going to stick with it so um let's uh open this file up for editing so i'm going to open this with gedit and let's uh let's add the code oh this is a, a php file uh, already uh gee whiz i'm already starting to mess things up okay and let's just make a note here um uh, this is the helper uh, uh class for mod random quote just to uh um, that's at least we do a little better there so we've got a comment here that says okay well um, this just reminds us that this is a, a helper class for the run, uh, for the mod random quote module right um, not necessary but it's kinda handy alright so now we're gonna create a class okay and um, we don't really need to uh, instantiate this class it, it just we just need to call functions for it so a uh, class that you typically don't um, uh, 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 instantiate you create as an abstract class so we're gonna create an abstract class and the class name um, uh, again you know Joomla follows a sort of a s sort of a, a naming um, standard so our class name will be the name of the module uh, with the word helper on the end and we're going to camel case starting with an uppercase so mod and we're not going to use any underscores random quote helper that's going to be the name of the class so if our module was called let's say mod um, get stats the helper class would be called mod get stats helper so it's pretty pretty straightforward okay so um, our class is going to have um, one function called uh, get random quote right and uh, we want to be able to access it so it needs to be marked as public and it, because it's an abstract class and we want to be able to access the function it needs to be a static function and then the name of our function we're going to call this get a random quote and it's not going to take any arguments so there's our function definition so um, the inside here we're going to say this is the um, you know the, the database code goes here and this is where we would write our stuff so for right now we're just going to simply return a string and we'll return uh, this is a returned quote and we're simply doing this here just for testing because um, we'll get into the database stuff here in a little bit so that's really all that um, we need to uh, have in this file to test again let's just recap here we're making an abstract class because we don't need to instantiate the class itself okay 
and uh, but because we want to uh, call the, the methods in the class we need to make sure that they're public and that they're static so when we call this it would be mod random quote helper colon colon get random quote that's how we would call it from the file so um, let's save this file and close that now in order to use that uh, we need to open up our main random quote PHP file here and edit that and what we want to do here is you notice that we have uh, uh, we have the defined line and we get the default layout well in between here we want to uh, uh, let's uh, include the mod uh, we want to include um, the mod random quote uh, uh, helper functions boy I cannot type today can't type anyway but um, but we only want to do that once okay so we're gonna um, we're gonna do that with a PHP require once right so this uh, uh, gets the file only one time and the file that we want to require is in the current directory so we're gonna use the dir macro here and append to that helper.php so this line will <clears throat> excuse me this uh, this line will import the helper uh, PHP class and stick it right here and then finally we want to say well our quote we want to use uh, our quote is uh, going to be mod random let me see what I've done there random quote helper remember that's the name of the class and we want to call the get random quote method from there so <clears throat> if all goes well this will import the uh, class and here we're going to call the static method get random quote which you recall will return that string that says you know this is this is the returned quote and assign it to quote okay so um, so at this point we have everything we need in, in the um, in the modules PHP file to to use our helper file so let's save that so now remember we were talking about this model view controller so remember the the file this helper file serves as the model because it's going to be responsible for getting the data this file here is controlling right so it says hey I, I want this and then it's going to call and get the um, the the layout or the the view <clears throat> excuse me sorry about that I had a call so this is going to call out the view now the view can use the data that we've pulled back so now we need to uh, adjust our view so let's save this file and close it and then in the tmpl directory the default php remember this is our d8 or our default uh, view let's open this and uh, right now we're you know we're just saying hey this is a random quote module so let's add uh, let's add a uh, a break tag so that uh, you know it's it puts a line a after that and then let's uh, echo uh, quote remember because quote was what we <laughs> is what we returned from the uh, helper um, method alright so that's really all we need to do that so now we have enough here that we can um, test so but before we can test we have to make some changes to our manifest file why because well we've added another file so let's go over here into the XML file and let's uh, edit that with gedit and then down here in the file section um, we need to add the helper um, PHP file so we need uh, it's a file file name and the file is helper.php we want to make sure that it's copied over when we install and that's all that we need to add to that so we can uh, save that and close it so now um, just a, a real quick recap uh, we've uh, added a helper class 
we've opened we've taken the uh, main uh, PHP file for our module and we've included this um, required once this file into here which has our class and the static method which we call to get a random quote and then we updated the view uh, to use the data that we returned from the helper class so now that we have everything in place we just need to zip all this stuff up create an archive zip file okay so there's our zip file and let's go test it so let's open up your web browser and go to joom.dev administrator for the back end and log in I think mine is admin admin and let's go to manage and install browse and we're in the right folder and there's the file open upload and install okay because I uninstalled mine I need to actually go in here and set the uh, module position and everything so I'm going to go to manage modules here's the random quote I'm going to leave the name as random quote I'm going to publish it I'm using protostar so I'll put it in position 7 which is on the right hand side and I'm going to make it visible on all pages so let me save and close that so now if I open the front end and go to joom.dev and take a look here well there's the random quote module and remember our view said random quote module and then um, display the quote remember this this is a return quote come from our uh, helper class to read the data you know that that will eventually read the database but we have everything in place we know everything works if you got any problems here go back and check your manifest make sure that you're including the correct file name uh, that you did include it and uh, check <clears throat> you know check the uh, contents of the files for uh, the helper class itself okay so now we're going to get into the weeds a little bit um, about you know getting getting the quote from the database and um, so the helper file we're gonna open this here to edit because remember we said this is where our database code goes and I'm just gonna delete this line here and let's uh, let's talk about this for a minute okay so we have the framework in place right to, that breaks out the functionality in different files um, and so we're going to tackle getting these quotes, okay? And we created this method called get random quote, which we're in here now, um, to do that. Now Joomla has uh, two classes. One's called J Database Driver, and the other one's called J Database Query, that uh, really make handling data, getting data from the database, really pretty simple, okay? The J uh, the the data J Database Driver class uh, worries about uh, handles all the connectivity to the database. You don't have to have the username and the password. It gets it for you from the configuration file. Uh, makes a connection to the database. Um, it will give you a database query object that you can um, uh, build the query. You give it back to the J database driver, and then you can execute the um, the, the query and, and get the data. So let's uh, let's just kind of talk. So we're, we want a variable. Uh, first thing we, we want to do is um, uh, we want to uh, get the database object, right? Get the um, J database driver object. So let's uh, let's make a note here. Get get database object. Okay, and we're going to store that, and uh, we're going to create a variable called DB for database, and that equals, and we're going to use uh, the J factory, J factory. Um, static method of get dbo and what this does is j factory if you, if you're not familiar with it <clears throat> uh is loaded uh, when um joomla starts up and makes a number of uh of uh, methods of or you know methods available to us to get information about the system and i would encourage you to go back and watch the um the uh, Joomla command execution cycle to kind of get a, an idea of what's going on there. So we're not going to delve real deep into that. Just know that JFactory get DBO will get you a connection to the database and we're going to assign that um, to a variable called DB. Okay. Now we need a query object and remember I told you that the 
um, that the uh, J database driver, which is held here in DB, uh, will give us a copy of the query. So we're going to create another variable called query, and we're going to say we want uh, DB um, get query, and it takes a parameter, either true or false. Now when we uh, get the query and we say true what we're saying is that we we want an empty blank query we want to start from scratch if you were to put false in there you could actually get the last query that uh, the database object has and and use it for something but you know like 99 percent of the time we're just going to use true because we'll want some you know we'll want a blank uh, query so let's uh, let's just make a note here Uh, we're going to uh, get the database query object from the driver. Okay, so. <clears throat> Alright, so now um, what we're going to do is, you know, we, we have these quotes, and remember I, I set you off to make your own quotes, or you could use mine. I have no idea how many quotes are there, and maybe later you add quotes or something like that. So we need to uh, figure out a way to have a, um, uh, to get the number of, of, of quotes that are in the table. And uh, my MySQL has a uh, function that you can actually uh, select on the table called count and it's uh, if, if we were to write that SQL out it would be like select uh, count uh, from and then the, the table name right and uh, you know, the, the table name in our case being mod random quote so um, that's that's the SQL that we want to run so let's talk about how to do that so we have this uh, query object okay and then the query object um, has methods that allow you to put together um, uh, put together uh, a SQL query, okay? And uh, the methods are called like select and from and uh, union and join and and uh, it allows you to build your query in pieces and then um, it will take care of putting everything together where it needs to be put. So let's uh, let's start with um, Let's make us a comment here. Uh, we'll call this create the query. Okay. And so we're going to say query. And we want to use the select method. Okay. And then inside the select method, we want to use um, um, you know, anything that you would normally use in a select. In this case, we're wanting to use count, right? The count function. Um, and nothing else. We just want to run that single function, and we want to um, use the query oops, from method, right? And this you can use anything in here that you would normally use in a from statement. So we want to use uh, from. Remember, we're going to use this little macro that says use my prefix that you've installed on my database mod random quote okay so that's that that's the table that we want to uh, um, that uh, we want to do the count from so when we run this uh, you know the functions say okay I've got this many um, uh, rows in the table so um, okay so now that we have the query built we need to uh, execute the query so we need first we want to store the query back to the driver right and it's pretty simple we'll say um, DB remember that's our driver and we want to set the query and then inside we pass to it the query object in our case we called it query alright so <clears throat> I know I'm probably not explaining this too well but let me let me try this again so we get the database driver object from from J factory and then we assign that to, to DB okay and then 
to create a query we need to get a query object from the database driver object so we run this method get query and we pass it true because we want an empty query and it's assigned to this query variable now when we create our SQL query we're using different methods from the query object to slowly build up our um, our, our query. So we use the select method and inside the select method we would pass in anything that we would be selecting from. So in this case I'm using the function count, right? But if I want to select ID, comma, name, comma, you know, you'd put your table, um, you'd put your uh, column names in here just like you would in a normal SQL select statement. And then I'm using the from method to tell what from I'm sorry, <laughs> what what table that I want to select this data from. So here I'm using uh, hash underscore underscore mod random quote and we use the hash underscore underscore in Joomla because of the database prefix. And of course, you know, if I wanted to, you know, alias it like as a or something, I, I could do that too. Anything that you would normally use in a from uh, statement, you could, uh, you can do that. All right, so we don't need anything else uh, for this quote. So or, I mean, for this query. So with our SQL built, in order to uh, actually uh, run run the query against the database, we have to give the query back to the driver because the driver is the one that's actually running the query against the database. So we tell it uh, we tell the driver we want to set the query to this query object. Okay, and then finally we need to get a result back. Okay, so let's uh, get the rows uh, uh, let's say get the number of rows man I'm embarrassing myself here today okay and we're gonna assign that to a variable so we're gonna say count which is gonna be the number of rows equals and then we're gonna use the driver and we're gonna call a method now there are a number of methods available to get data from uh, the database uh, but in this case I'm expecting just a single value so there's a there's a method called load result and load result will return a single value so load result okay and then uh, store it in account so we get the database we get a query an empty query we create our query we write we set the query back into the driver and then we tell the driver to uh, run the query and give me a single result that's that's what we're expecting for and we're assigning it to count okay so um, so at this point you know we have the count um, and uh, and we can use it uh, to, to try to get a random uh, random quote from from our table and uh, again, I apologize. I, I'm not much of a teacher. I'm really not much of a programmer. But uh, hopefully, you're gleaning something out of this. And uh, if you read uh, the uh, the PDF or the web page that goes with it, it'll probably be a lot more more clear to you. Okay. So now that we have the number of rows that are in the um, that are in the table, the number of quotes. So if you follow, if you're following along with this, you know that I created 50 quotes so that the when I query the database with the count uh, function that it's going to return 50 and, and that's what's going to be in here but you know you may have done 20 or somebody may have done 100 or whoever so this is why we're going through the work of actually getting this okay so now we're going to we're going to get a uh, random record from that because and we will assign that to uh, let's see let's just make this comment here uh, Get a random uh, record from the table. All right, so we'll call this uh, we'll call this uh, record number, and we'll use the PHP random function, and then it takes as a parameter the starting value and the end value. So what we're saying here is that uh, we want uh, uh, a number between one and however many uh, rows we have in the database and we're going to assign that to record number so um, now something about RAND you know RAND um, uh, can't uh, shouldn't be used for any cryptographic purposes because they, they uh, it, it's not secure and another thing here uh, that uh, we're counting on and, and I'm not uh, 
really making provisions for is that uh, for this to work it assumes that the index this number that we're, we're using as a count that uh, uh, if we have let's say 10 records that the index goes from 1 to 10 and that we haven't deleted a record because what could possibly happen is that we could random randomly draw one that we've deleted and then when we try to pull it it will be it will not be there and we'll have a database error but we control the data right we're the one writing the module we know that uh, they're all there so we're just gonna leave that as it is okay alright so now we have um, we have uh, we've gathered how many rows we've randomly selected one now we need to actually go and get that row of data so uh, we need to get um, we need to get an a, get a clean uh, query object right and remember we done that by saying database driver and we want to get query sorry and we want an empty query so we're going to pass true so that gives us a new query remember we already have the database object so we don't have to get that right and then um, we need to um, uh, generate the SQL so we'll say oops you see what I've done there this should be query equals right and we're just going to reuse the uh, we're going to reuse the query variable it doesn't matter uh, this that we can blast this object away uh, okay so we're going to generate the SQL and so we want uh, query we want to select right and what we want to select from our table is the name oops the quote and the source so those are the columns that we want to return from the table okay um, now something else I want to mention about um, the query uh, methods uh, the select and they're actually chainable so I could uh, come down here and and uh, chain these together and I'm going to use from. So what do, what do I want to query from? Well, I'm going to query from mod random quote table. Um, so I want the name, the quote, and the source from the mod random quote uh, table. And you see here that I've, I've chained these. We can actually come over here and stack these like this if you want. I only put the white space in here to uh, make it uh, a little easier to read. So I mean if you like to chain that you can do that. Uh, save yourself a little typing. Uh, or you can do both. So I'm going to say we um, so we want the name quote and the source from this table and then we're going to use the where method and this is just like the where clause in um, SQL we put anything here that um, we would normally put in a where clause. So we want to say that the ID equals, okay, now I uh, use double quotes here so that I can insert a variable and I want the record number. Recall that's the uh, that's the uh, random number that we generated up here, right? So, um, so we're saying we want this specific quote where the ID equals this and we want the name quote and the source and then from the table so I'm assuming that you know uh, enough about uh, 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 SQL um, to, to understand what I'm following but basically it creates uh, creates this query it says select right name um, quote source from mod random quote where ID equals X right where X is at the random number so that's basically the SQL um, 
quarry that it's creating. All right, so now that uh, we got the quarry, um, we need to uh, we need to get the the database. So uh, or we need to get the results. So remember that we have to uh, uh, we've got to copy the quarry uh, to the driver, right? And we do that by driver or the the driver the database, right? And uh, that's uh, set quarry. And then what quarry do we want it to work with? Well, it's our quarry object that we got earlier. Okay. And then um, then we want to uh, load load the row. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I told you that there are a number of ways to get data from uh, the driver. And there are actually uh, three ways. To, you know, we're expecting only a single row to come back. We're not ex expecting multiple rows or or anything like that. And we have three <clears throat> uh, methods available to us that will allow us to get a, a single row. Um, one is called uh, load row. So we could say um, um, uh, record. This is the record that we're returning equals right db load row okay and <clears throat> what this will do is uh, it will return the row uh, as an array where uh, in a, as a number indexed array so <clears throat> uh, record 0 right would be the name record 1 right would be the quote and record 2 um, would be the source and, and what I mean by that is you know record um, one, right? Just as a as an index uh, of the var variable that of the variable here that we set would be the quote. So that's load row, and then <clears throat> another one that we have available to it is is load uh, associative, right? And that will return an associative array where the key is the name of the column. So it would be um, it would be record right and then the key of name right because that's what we're pulling back then that would contain the name or or record uh, quote right would would have the quote so I mean you get the idea there so that's that's another option that we have and then finally we have one called uh, load load object <clears throat> where it returns a, uh, a, st a PHP standard object and then to access it it would be um, load name. So name would be, <clears throat> you know, the 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 index to the uh, to the name and then quote and etc. So you, you get the idea. So which one to use? Well, it really just depends on how you plan on accessing the um, the code in in your you know in your program. Where you know maybe using a, uh, an associative array makes sense, or maybe just using an index, or maybe you're using it doesn't you know it's just whatever uh, best suits your needs. Okay, but for this uh, example, I'm just going to use the load object and and return an object. Okay, and assign it to record. Okay, so um, now that we have the uh, record uh, back, uh, we need to return this to the caller. We'll just simply do that with return record. All right, so man, I've probably uh, really obfuscated this a little bit for some of you guys, and and uh, again, if if I'm not making a lot of sense, feel free to log in the website and ask me questions. I really encourage you to read the page that I've written on this. I've, I think I'm a lot clearer. I'm not a good speaker, and I'm not a good programmer, but you know, again, I'm just trying to share this. But let's just. Uh, very very quickly run through this again uh, to get data from the database we got to get the database object right and then we get a query from uh, uh, empty query from the database we create our query and when we're done creating our query we send it back to the database driver and then we call the database uh, one of the database drivers methods to get data from the database if we want a single result like we're you know, in this case I'm expecting a um, a uh, uh, just a count I'm going to use load result if we're getting a table 
uh, row, a single row, then we have um, you know load row, load associative or load object that we can use, and then um, the data is is returned. Now I will say this, uh, and we might come back and clean up a little bit. Uh, we really should use a try and a catch here in case there's an error so that we can handle it gracefully. But right now we're just uh, we're just learning. Okay, so that's this is everything that we need in the helper. So when we call this uh, from our modules PHP file, this get random quote. The end result is that we're going to get we're going to see how many quotes are in the table. We're going to randomly select one of those. We're going to get that quote and then we're going to return that record. Okay, uh, back to the caller. So let's save that and close this. So now we need to, uh, uh, in order to see the quote, we need to change the view to, in order to use it. And remember that the quote uh, in our main uh, modules PHP file, we're returning that as, as a variable quote. So that's the variable name that we'll want to use. So let's go to the template and default and let's open that to edit. Okay. Now we had, uh, you know, this random quote module, yada, yada, yada. We're just going to remove that stuff and let's um, let's put it out there. So I'm going to use an echo um, and let's see. Uh, let's do a paragraph tag and uh, let's make it bold. And we want uh, quote. Remember, that's what it's coming back as and we want the name okay and uh, we need to close our tags alright so um, so we're gonna put the author's name uh, bolded in a paragraph and we need the quote so let's uh, put uh, another paragraph tag here Oops. another paragraph tag here and let's close it and then inside the paragraph tag uh, I'll tell you what let's use a uh, quote character okay and we're gonna need two of those and then inside the quote we want the quote so quote quote alright um, that looks good. So finally we need to put the source, so echo. And put that in a paragraph. And tell you what, let's uh, emphasize this. And let's uh, put an M dash in front of it. So I believe that's uh, M dash. And a space, so it's kind of clean here. And then we want the source, so let's quote source. Remember our row is brought back as an object so we're referencing them with the arrow okay source and uh, so we need to close our emphasis tag and we need to close our paragraph and let me look here real quick open close open close m dash a space and then the source so that looks good so that's all we need uh, for that so we can save that um, and we can test it. So let's uh, close this here. Let's go back to our project file. Let's select all these files and compress those. Yeah, I want to create it. Yep, I want to replace the one I got. And close. Now let's go install it and see if it worked. Wish me luck. So we want to go to extensions, install. Oops. Admin, admin. Okay, we're going to upload and it's uh, browse for our package. There it is. Open. Upload and install. Alright, says it was successful. Let's go to the home page. Click home. Ooh, look here. Undefined variable quote and modules random quote default. Ah, see right here from, uh, this is why we turn on error reporting. I see that uh, we misnamed uh, the variable and the default in the view. So let's go back to our project, and that was in template. We know it's in the view, and let's look here. Uh, let's see, define JXEC quote. Oh, see what I've done here. 
that should be an ampersand uh, okay let's save that okay and of course you know we'll have to go back and compress this yep I'm gonna replace it okay we're gonna have to go back and reinstall it. Now remember, we're doing upgrades, so it doesn't, uh, and we haven't started versioning yet, so installing over itself isn't a real issue here. So we'll upload that. Okay, it said it was successful. Let's go over here and hit home again. Ah, all right, here we go. So there's a random quote module. This is Thomas Jefferson. It said the greatest good that we can do our country is to heal its party divisions and make them one people. Isn't there a lot of truth to that? So that was from Thomas Jefferson. It was a letter to John Dickinson on July 23rd, 1801. So it looks good. So if I hit home again, I should get a different one. I do. And again. And again. So, hey, it looks like it's working. So, um, boy, we really stumbled through this one, or I did. Uh, it was kind of good that uh, you seen that I made some mistakes because that happens. And later, um, we're going to talk about another method of developing using... Um, net beans uh, to make life easier for us but I, I want you to understand how the the, the project files work uh, before we get into something more convoluted and we you know uh, but we'll get there you know we've traveled a long way down the, uh, this this road you know in this series of tutorials but look we got a, a whole lot further to go and there's some exciting things to uh, to learn um, you know to be you know to write extensions for Joomla and uh, as I prepare these I learn a little bit more so it helps me and and uh, hopefully I'm not driving you guys too crazy but uh, in the next installment of writing a module uh, we're gonna look at module parameters and how they're used and how we access them and and how we can make uh, our our module more robust uh, and usable uh, for the end user uh, but probably before I release that I noticed that when I done an upgrade that I run into some errors that might throw uh, some people uh, for a loop so I'm gonna do a little um, uh, walk in the weeds or maybe a development. I, I really decided what uh, um, category I want to put that in, but uh, I think that it needs to be covered, uh, especially if you're new and learning. Again, I, I really encourage you, um, if you want to um, uh, learn a little bit more about the database and what uh, I've covered, uh, now keep in mind that I will will cover more. Um, there is uh, um, if I can find it here, there's a, uh, um, a, a some documents. Um, here, let's just Google it. Well, here, uh, we want to go to uh, docs.joomla. Oops. org, right? And we want selecting. Uh, selecting data using J database. There it is. This uh, this will tell you uh, much more than I've told you about uh, using uh, J database query and getting the results. I encourage you to read that, and we will cover more of these as we come. I, I just don't want to deluge you with a whole pile of crap uh, to learn uh, when really we're just trying to uh, get our feet wet here a little bit. Uh, again, if you have questions, if you're watching on the YouTube, feel free to post uh, the questions under the video, uh, or um, go to myheap.com and go to technology exploring Joomla 3x um, and you can uh, you know you can download the source files for um, the, the the for the episode uh, you can download this web page as a PDF or you can watch the video from here but if you have questions feel free to use the contact us link and email me and I will do my best uh, to help you so again I apologize for the uh, typos the stammering uh, probably the poor code practice but hey we're in this and we're trying to learn together and I appreciate your patience and hopefully this helped so in the meantime have a blessed day